so let's talk about corner play. Now, uh, a lot of players struggle to play the corner well. Playing defense in the corner is very difficult. It's very difficult. Not gonna, not gonna take that away from you guys. Um, but playing offense in the corner is actually still a little bit tricky, even though it's very favorable to you to have the person cornered playing offense. Um, it's it's not a super straightforward thing to do, and it's very easy to lose the corner um, to a, a back throw or a jump out uh, or some kind of hit confirm that, that can be very frustrating and can really turn the momentum of a game. So being able to play the corner well is very important because so much of this game is about getting your opponent to the corner because of how uh, limiting that is and how much damage every character can do in the corner every character's damage goes up in the corner and all of their offensive sequences become stronger in the corner so so let's talk about some corner play so we've got mr ryu here in the corner right <clears throat> now you know we do something we sweep them yada yada uh now when we are playing the corner we have all of our normal setups right we have our tick throw um, with the Kali or command grab characters, we have tick command grab, we have meaty command grab, we have meaty throw. Then of course we have just meaty button, we have frame traps, we got shimmy, right? Those are all of our options. All good, all great, um, and all super useful for different reasons. But let's say we knock our Ryu down. Um, let's say, yeah, so we're gonna knock him down and then we're gonna turn guard on. <laughs> and we do our little scenario. It doesn't work, okay. Right, he played good defense. We didn't get him opened up, guessing on a command grab or a throw with our frame trap. So now here we are. We're in this spot. Ryu's sweep is still kind of a threat here. Most any character's sweep and some of their crush counter buttons are still a bit of a threat here. Um, and so just standing here isn't 100% safe, but it's still pretty favorable to us. Now, here's what a lot of players struggle to do, and, and it's to maintain the corner. Because what happens is you get the corner, your eyes swell up like dinner plates and you tend to get hyper aggressive so this right sequence didn't work and you're like well i want another one so you go in or, i want another one so you go in all right this didn't work i want another one this didn't work i want another one um and that's not exactly the best way or even a super good way to play the corner there is definitely times to do that and again it's hard to give hard and fast rules I'm just giving general strategic principles here but it's um people right just really want to go at it when they've got someone in the corner because they know it's a great opportunity and they want to just maul and they want to open you up. But let's step back and try to play this a, a bit more procedurally, if you will, and to, to play the corner better and more economically. So we do our first scenario and the Ryu doesn't bite. Uh, uh, uh. Now one of the smartest things we can do right now is back up just a little bit. See, by backing up just a little bit, Ryu has no button that can touch us. If Ryu presses anything, we can whiff punish it, crush counter it, or just kind of let it whiff and then use it to close the space back in on his recovery. All of it's safe to us, right? But what this really favors us for is the jump out. Because everybody knows the corner's bad and most people's reaction to get out of the corner is to jump. So we did our scenario, right? Boom, oh, we got a nice second throw, nice. I'm gonna try and counter hit him, didn't bite. Okay, first thing I should do is back up just a touch and wait. Let this Ryu panic in the corner, see what he does. Because a lot of times people will jump or move or press a button here. And that's very easy if you're just sitting back and waiting for it. Very easy opportunity for whiff punish, for anti-air, um, or for if they dash, right? Just checking them and putting them back in the corner. Big damage if you're just gonna sit back and look for it. So be a little more patient, a little more economic here of, okay, I know you wanna get out of the corner. Let's see what you try to do. Be ready for it so that I can maintain the corner again. You know what I mean? And then see what happens from there. And then if they choose to sit in the corner, now we can very slowly, because remember, they can't go anywhere, right? They are completely in our domain. We can be much more slow and methodical about getting these buttons back on top of them, right? Getting at just enough range for our good buttons and staying away from their good buttons and finding right more particular times to put that dash in rather than just doing it, doing it, doing it, checking those feet, all that stuff. This all becomes very useful because it makes it far more difficult for them to play the corner if we're going to relax, be a little bit more slow, and just keep everything in our favor rather than constantly trying to get, 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 get. Because you don't need to just get, 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 get. They're in the corner. They're not going anywhere. 
They got nothing that they can do here except try and fight their way out. And so if you'll just chill, right? Look for the jump out, be ready for it. Look for them to dash or to press a button and take advantage of it. You will get so much more mileage out of your corner game and maintain so much more control. Because the longer they're there, the more panic they get and the more they try to fight to get out. And that's how you really start racking the damage up. Um, and then that's how you get them to panic DP, to do all that great stuff. So if you're gonna play the quarter on offense, right? Yeah. You've got your sequences, you know what they are, you like to run them. And when your sequence doesn't work, right? That happens, or they do tech the throw because they're in the corner and they gotta guess and they don't, you know, they're, they're not a fan here. Well, back up just a touch and wait a second. That should be one of your first moves when you're maintaining the corner. See what they do, right? Anti-air them back in if they jump, check them if they dash, they're pressing a button, see if you can whiff punish it, but if not, like let them flounder for a second, then slowly come get your buttons back on top of them, right? Sneak in the dash, of course, sneak in the jump, of course, but you know, be much more controlled with the way you're going to just make these people hold this corner pressure. And you will find it's much more difficult for them to get out and you're gonna rack up a ton of gray life, you're gonna rack up a ton of um, anxiety and pressure, and you're gonna rack up damage from their mistakes. And when you anti-air, right, you're right back in for another mix-up. When you punish them for trying to dash out or whiff punish them, boom, you're right back in for another mix-up. And then you can try again. So, <clears throat> it is uh, far better to control the corner than to just put pressure on in the corner. And most people think that the benefit of the corner is the fact that you can just engage pressure, 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 and it's hard to fight it off. It's actually better because they have nowhere to go. Their only option is forward. And forward is exactly where you want them to go because that's where all your goodies are hanging out, right here in front of them. And that's very difficult for them to deal with because they can't control the range that these buttons are gonna be. Ryu can't make this button be a little further or himself a little closer like he would wanna be. He's only gonna be as close to this button as I want him to be because he has to step into it if he's gonna do something. So it's far, far more better. It is far, far better to control the corner than it is to just put pressure on in the corner. So let's talk about defense in the corner. Flip, this, flip the script here. Same thing kind of applies. If your opponent is gonna be aggressive, if you're willing to eat a couple of throw mix-ups because you have that kind of life to give until they do go for their frame trap, What's gonna happen is if they are blindly engaging, you can be sure that they're gonna re-engage somehow. It's gonna be a special move. They're gonna come right here and throw a fireball. They're gonna jump. And all three of those things are very easily punishable for you because if you react jump to a fireball, except for a couple characters, most of the time you're at least, they're gonna have to block your jump in, which gets you if you react to their fireball and make them block a jump in, you've pushed yourself this far out, right? Imagine that you'd probably get that too. You've got all this space to work with now, which is super helpful because now you can back away from their buttons and move in. You have some control over the space again. That's huge. It makes your dashes valuable and your back dashes actually a thing again. Um, and so even just getting that kind of space because you reaction jumped to a fireball and made them block it, huge for you. Huge for you on getting out of the corner safely. So if they're gonna put on blind pressure, expect after you finally get the block string blocked, because you ate a few throws and they're like, oh, well, I guess I'll not throw now because I've thrown him enough times, he should tech. You can let them do that aggressive re-engage of some kind and punish them there. Get the anti-air and then meaty them. Check the dash, get a combo, and then, right, get yourself out of the corner and meaty them. Um, but if you, if you look for these specific things, you will find playing out of the corner much, much easier. But now, let's say you've tried that, but they're playing the same kind of corner game I was telling you about, where they're being very controlled and they are really keeping you honed in on this space. So what are your options to get yourself out of the corner? Well, first off, don't think you can't throw a fireball just because you're cornered. That's actually not true at all. Your fireball is still an important poke even when your back is to the wall and you do need to use it, especially at like closer ranges um, and EX ones keep yourself even safer, but also to blow through their fireballs if they're gonna use one to try and kind of control you in the corner. Because if you can get that knockdown, again, it gives you a little bit of space, which is very important. So you don't need to just shut off fireballs. You can still use fireballs, but they are, again, a little bit trickier um, because if they jump one and make you block it, the throw is a lot more meaningful now because they got you cornered 
and they actually get at least a little bit of oaky. Um, not as good as something else, right? It's still not great oaky, but it's a little bit of oaky. So you should still use your fireballs to help control. What else you need to use are strong spaced buttons that you can confirm off of. Um, so Ryu standing medium kick is good just to keep people out, right? The way it just works laterally, just to be like, okay, stay back, right? Don't just walk in here for free. It's gonna be something out here. But you can use his crouching medium punch, his standing medium punch, um, and his crouching light kick as well, just to kind of maintain space. And some of those can be buffered as well. But a really strong, important tool to remember is that if someone's gonna hold you in the corner, from here, they can't do anything except throw a projectile if they have one. But otherwise, their best pressure is gonna be from getting near you. And how do they have to do that? Um, well, the same as anyone does, dash, walk, or throw. Or dash, walk, or throw. Dash, walk, or jump. So, <clears throat> that means dash and jump are both punishable, but walk means that their feet are exposed. And so a very important tool for defending yourself in the corner is ranged lows. That's why you actually see a lot of pros even sweep when they're cornered. Because getting a knockdown or a crush counter sweep is a free out of the corner. You're, you're literally out for free if you catch him with that. And it's not a terrible risk to go for. Um, because if you catch them at range, their punish isn't going to be great. Now if you do it up here, their punish is going to be huge and you don't want to do that. But if you can catch them at some range and you know that they're going to be out here pressing buttons, especially mediums, and you can out-prioritize them with a sweep, it's it's actually fairly common to catch a sweep or a crush counter sweep with your back to the wall. But also, more importantly, is more safer ranged lows. Crouching light kick, crouching medium kick with just about any character is a good way to stop people's approach. And if you can buffer with them, it's even better. Because then, if you do catch him, and you can safely buffer your way out of the corner, like, that's a that's a hit confirm, and we're out, right? Think of your Karens, your Kens. Ryu can kind of do it. Um, Akuma can do it. Nikali and V-Trigger can do it. Um, Nash with V-Trigger can do it. Even on block, right? He's totally safe. He's actually plus. So a lot of characters have really good ways of doing this. And so if they're going to come at you in the corner, it's smart to either use some good range buttons so that their walk-in isn't free, but also range buttons that will check their feet because they're going to be walking at you to press these buttons. And so if you're checking their feet and you're buffering off of lows, there's a lot of ways to catch them for trying to hold you in the corner because the number one thing that they have to give up, the really the only thing that they have to give up if they're gonna do corner pressure is their feet. That's the only thing that they have to give up to do corner pressure, it's the feet. There's like an exception with Guile being able to just throw booms from like this specific range over and over and over again until he can chip you out and it's really dumb. But um, you can EX Fireball back through. Uh, but if you don't have one, it's just really, really rough because Fireball, 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 if you jump Flash Kick, it can, it can, there's certain scenarios it can be a checkmate against certain characters. It's really, really rough. But outside of that, right, everyone else, they're giving up their feet to get closer to you. And it's an opportunity to at least keep them at bay if not confirm your way out or open them up to get out. Super useful strategy with your back to the wall. The last thing I wanna say, and this is in line with corner defense and economic defense. Most V triggers or V trigger activations involve resets of some kind. And the strongest resets in the game are ones that are pure 50-50s, high, low, left, right, um, that you just straight up have to guess on. Now, if you are getting reset by someone, you're a Buki, you're a Kuma, right? You're um, yeah, the Mika, Mika resets, stuff like that. This is, it's important to consider the scenario, right? What's your health looking like and what's your stun looking like? But if you have health or stun to give and you get reset, a very smart thing to do is to just defend the corner. And what I mean by that is to hold, ah, I'm not dashing, is to hold backwards, like, block into the corner because here's what's going to happen most people when they have you in the corner and they do a reset they don't want to give up the corner right it's the best spot to be so when they're going to reset you they're going to do it in a way that probably stays with you in the corner um oh man the the poison one off of her v skill where it looks like she's on one side of you but then she just kind of teleports to the other with her crouching medium punch Right? Like a lot of times poisons will probably choose the one that keeps you cornered. They'll take the plus frames, but they don't want to give up the corner, right? So if you just defend the corner, here's what happens. 
if the person wants to maintain the corner, you're always going to block it. And then you are fine on the mix-up. But if they don't take the corner and you block the wrong way, you eat damage, but what you gain is getting thrown out of the corner. So it costs you life and it costs you stun. And if it's not going to kill you or stun you in a way that really, really matters, you did just get out of the corner, right? You paid something, but you let them take you out of the corner. They chose to just give it up for free, right? Or not for free, but give it up at the cost of that one mix up. And then you can go ahead and reset space and try again on winning that round. So it's actually a pretty good strategy, generally speaking. And again, you have to consider the context and the scenario. Do you have life to give? And do you have stun to give? And if you do, it might be highly beneficial to just go ahead and block in the corner. Just block with your back to the corner. And if you're wrong, let them eat the life and let them send you out of the corner because there's a far overall greater benefit to being out of the corner than that life that you paid to go ahead and stay in the corner. So that's all for today's lesson. Uh, it's really just kind of about thinking in the scenario, in context, when you're playing defense especially, what is the real value of defending against this throw, defending against this frame trap, of defending against the command grab? Again, I know, think of the situation. Think of your life as a resource. Think of what you stand to gain and what you stand to lose for each of the choices that you're going to make. Um, and then, honestly, a lot of times, just give up the life for the sake of eating the smaller, the smaller cost. Just give up the life, eat the smaller cost, and keep yourself safe. And that's going to just make your rounds extend and give you more opportunities to play defense and more opportunities to reset neutral and to win rounds. Um, because if you're just guessing all the time or if you're just playing out of fear, you can lose rounds really fast, really often if people figure out what you're afraid of and start abusing it. Uh, and then play in the corner. Think control, not pressure. Control is far more valuable than pressure. So that's what I got for you guys. I hope this was super helpful. As always, I'm available in the comments. And if you want private one-on-one -on -one coaching, visit patreon.com slash But as always, fight on, level up, and have fun. I'll see you later.